You love to eat. You love to live comfortable. You love to go shopping. You love to look fresh. You love the movies. You love to drive a nice car. You love your independence. There's only one missing piece to the puzzle. You need a job. In the words of Barbados national hero, the right honorable Robin Fenty, said me if you work, 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 work. See me do me dirt, 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 dirt. <laughs> Welcome on everybody, I'm Andre Beckford and or is better than House of the Dragon and this is Rome in a Day. In the Home Sweet Home episode in which I'll put a link at the end of this episode, go watch it after this. I talked about the immigrant and living conditions in which I gave my five most important things to get in order when living with family and friends. And in those tips, I stress getting a job as soon as possible. But hold up, working in your home country is different than working in a foreign country. They are not the same. But as you might have seen in the other episodes, this isn't the show to list out the step-by-step -step process of job hunting. However, we will talk about the experiences of that search and what I, along with other immigrants, have been through. Now with all this recession talk, I just want to let you know that there's always something in demand. Might not be what you want, but you gotta eat, right? When I first came to America, the first job I got was as a library aide. A library aide. You know what's one of my least favorite parts of any educational institution? The library. All right, don't judge me. Story time. I'm going to talk about the first interview that I had when I came here. I remember I went to that interview and it was, yes, the interview for the library aide. Now, one thing with Jamaicans, when they go to an interview, especially for a place that we see as formal as a library, you dress up for the interview. I was in my long sleeve shirt, well ironed, pants with the seam running down the center, my nice, nice church tie. I was dressed to impress. Now, this interview was in New York City. And of course, a lot of the people in New York City are from the Caribbean. So a few of the people in the interview who were the interviewers, they were from the Caribbean, not Jamaica, but uh, from like Trinidad, and some other Caribbean islands, and they pretty much understood why I dressed like that, but they looked at me and they straight up told me that this wasn't that type of interview and that I should be looking for a job higher up because they saw my credentials. And <laughs> the, the reason I'm laughing is that just recently I was watching another video on YouTube and this guy was speaking about the same situation where... He came from Jamaica and he dressed up in his suit and tie for a job that didn't require that. And the funny thing is, before I saw that video, you, you get the feeling that your situation is unique. But trust me, it is not unique. As a matter of fact, I'm going to post that video at the end of this video. His name is Dale Elliott. A lot of Jamaicans know him. He's a very popular personality. And the video that he did was strikingly similar to what a lot of immigrants go through up here and he's a very entertaining guy so I'm, I'll, I'll post the link at the end of this video and I say that to say we are many you're not in this alone the immigrant experience see I had to get a job somewhere and I was very adamant I told him hey I need the money and I have to get paid I got the job and it turned out that I was getting $400 a month. I remember when I told one of my friends that I was getting $400. He said, $400 a week? That's not bad. No, no, no. I told him $400 a month. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> he acted like he was getting a stroke. Side mission. Remember earlier when I said I left a great job in the field in which I went to college for? Let's talk a little bit about that. There was one point in my life in which I was a reporter for the government of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Now, this island was paradise. It still is paradise. This was uh, over, over a decade ago. But I'm pretty sure I still see ads. It's The water is one of the most beautiful 
I've ever seen in my life. Now, this country, and I don't want to offend anybody there because I still have a lot of friends there. I still met a lot of good people there. But my experience was 50-50. Now, if there's one thing you should know about Turks Islanders is that they are an extremely proud set of people. Almost as proud as Jamaicans, but nobody can match Jamaican pride. Yard man. And did I mention that it was a very good job? It was well paid. I got enough money to... And Turks and Caicos is a very expensive country. I got enough money to live a good life, pay for rent in a decent uh, apartment. And at that time, I had to collect my paycheck in a literal check. And every time I would go down to that government office to collect that check, the, the person at the front, front desk or the area that I picked up the check would always read out the amount of money I was getting allowed, look me from head to toe, and look at me and said, Andre Beckford, huh? And how much you getting at this place again? The government is paying us this type of money, but you are getting this type of money? I had one secret weapon though. Remember I said, oh, it was 50-50? I was, just like I am today, a very jovial reporter. And that gained me a lot of likes. And even though they didn't like the fact that a Jamaican was making this much money, it was Andre Beckford. Now, can I tell you, wherever Jamaicans go, we excel. It could be good things and it could be bad things but we always tend to excel that's how we are we are a, we are a, we are a excellent type of people Ugh. there was this one guy i remember and anybody who was working in the turks and caicos the time i was working there know exactly who i was talking about i'm not gonna call any name but this guy was so against outsiders getting good jobs and every day he would try to make my life a living hell. Professionally. And I say professionally because the weird thing is, outside of the workplace, this guy would be the coolest person to hang out with. I think in another life or if I go there to visit again, I'll definitely hang out with him. But for work with him, nah. Now regardless of the negatives that I faced when I was there, if there is one thing I learned with that country is that respect, respect, respect could carry you very far. And you remember I told you that the Turks and Caicos people are a very proud set of people. All you have to do is play around with that pride. Respect the country. They loved when you respect their country. You realize how I'm saying that very often. It's a thing that you should carry in every new country you go to respect now remember i said it was sort of a story of 50 50 for the folks that were on the good side they made the good times in this country very good i mean we'd fly island to island we'll go on boat rides we would we go to different churches we go to various places on the island and some of these people were people in a high standing in the country. So I'd get to go to places where average people didn't get to go to. And because I was working with the government media house, I met a lot of high-ranking officials. And you know what? A lot of these high-ranking officials, unlike a lot of countries like bigger countries like america they were at the end of the day just another islander like everybody else and that i can appreciate i remember when i decided to leave the country when i decided to leave that job and migrate to america one of the ministers he was very upset that i was leaving and even though he was upset it made me feel that my time there, as short as it was, was, was worth it a little. So, who knows? 
Maybe I'll see you again, Turks and Caicos. At the end of the day, like I said before, respect for culture was usually the best way to get some type of acceptance in these types of society. Back to story time. When I was younger and less knowledgeable about the difficulties of living in a new country, I used to scorn people well, not really scorn people, but scorn the fact that they would leave their good jobs and come to America for wipe ass. Find a job yesterday. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's an honest bread, I could have wipe your wipe ass. I said that I would never come to this country and do that foolishness. Me? No, I'm better than that. My second job in America was as a certified nurse technician. That's just a fancy name for a professional doodle cleaner. That's just a fancy name for shit stain remover. That's just a fancy name for taking care of people who can't take care of themselves. If you know what I mean. I was a CNA in the great state of Tennessee, the first state in which I was called a nag. But that is for our next episode. While I was a CNA, I was a full-time CNA. I was working 12-hour night shifts. So I was working from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I was a full-time nursing student. So when I was done cleaning rump, I would go home, shower, and head straight to my classes. There was a point where I would just be knocked out at the back of the class. But I had good professors at that time. And they allowed me to do that as long as I kept my grades up. And I did keep my grades up. But, <laughs> get it? But. <sighs> Anyways, going to school full time and being a CNA full time didn't really connect. It's not that I couldn't do it. I was doing it, but this was a very expensive school and I didn't want to rack up bills too much. So enter good old Uncle Sam. That's right. I joined the greatest Navy on God's planet, the U.S. Navy. And you know what I'm going to say. That's a story for another episode. 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 All right, all right. I'm not going into too much details on that, but let me know in the comments or via email if you'd be interested in an episode on immigrants' experiences in the military. Uh, if heightened interest is there, I'll probably do one. Again, earlier I said there are differences working in a caribbean island such as jamaica and working in a country that's dead set on capitalism like the united states of america both are two totally different experiences jamaica for one is way more laid back if you don't want to go work in a jamaica and i mean this was when i was there i'm pretty sure things have changed a bit or maybe not let me know but when I was in Jamaica, if you didn't want to go to work, you didn't go to work. And your boss would have vexed, but you would still have your job. I can tell you one thing about the United States. In most of the jobs that you will get, be prepared to be very tired when you come home. You may have the urge to go shower and eat and just lock up in your bed. But if there's one thing about working in the United States is this. Be prepared to be tired when you come home from work. You may have the urge to go shower, eat, and just lock down your bed. Might I suggest fighting this urge? Some of your best push to meet your life's goals come after you clock out of the man's work. Use this time to work on you. Research tutorials and topics you love. Go out, go on a walk. Go hang out with friends that have similar goals. Discuss the future. Push. My thoughts. Immigrants. We have a history 
and a reputation for being very hard workers. Now, in that population, there are always the lazy people that I have to mention. That will never change. In a country like Jamaica and many other countries, you can work your ass off and still not see the benefits of your labor. But the beautiful thing about America in which I can speak to is that forget the lazy people. Though it is a very different and difficult nation for foreigners, if you are hard working and a motivated individual, you will be rewarded. Trust me on that. Real quick, if you haven't watched it yet, please check out the Home Sweet Home episode that talks about living experiences of the immigrant. And if you like this episode, just go ahead and hit the like button. It helps out a lot. And if you have any ideas, go ahead and put it in the comments. That helps a lot. Subscribe. That helps a lot. And spread the word. That also helps a lot. And guys and girls, I really appreciate you watching this episode. So until next time, Rome good. So me a fee work, 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 work.